Let us lay aside how much weight? Wow, this sermon is scriptural. And the sin which so easily ensnares us. This is hard to talk about because people just go bonkers. The reason sin so easily ensnares us because we identify with it, we're sure we're always going to commit it, and self-centeredness is still in many of our lives unconfronted, and sin has an easy landing strip in that place. My Bible says, if I wake up and present myself to righteousness, that alone, that awareness alone will produce its fruit to holiness without me biting my lip to be holy. That means grace will empower my life to be what I never was until I saw what I see through him. All of a sudden, the truth is changing me. And I am what I am by the grace of God, and he gets all the glory, and I'm not a self-made man, and I don't need a trophy, great Christian trophy. I'll get before heaven one day, and trust I'll be guilty of believing <laughs> that he'll bang the gavel. Dan Moeller, boom, guilty <gasps> of believing me. <sighs> yes, because if I get that verdict, you don't even have to read the list, baby. <laughs> guilty of believing him? Believe in what? You're accepted. You belong, your life's on purpose, you're not a mistake. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Love not your own life unto death. Yeah? Don't grow weary and well, don't believe. Put your hand to the plow and don't look back. Believe. Believe you're in a race. Believe and run worthy of the calling. Yeah? Believer. Believe means a lot. Fully persuaded and convinced, you believe this thing. You know what your life lived reveals? What you believe. That's fair. Your life lived reveals what you believe. Sometimes it reveals what you see and don't see, understand and don't understand, but that ultimately boils down to what you believe. Are you with me? Every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance. Remember Hebrews 10, you have need of, which is telling you, watch this, there's going to be conflict, there's going to be trials, there's going to be things pressing against your joy, your encouragement, encouragement level, your personal desires, your personal preferences, your sentimental hopes and things towards family. There's going to be all kinds of strategies and schemes set against you to keep you from ever living what he paid for. And it's going to feel like it's aimed at you, but it's not. It's aimed at the kingdom. you got this demon war against the kingdom of God, and you get to stand sanctified and separated out of darkness into light and live for the kingdom because the kingdom of God is at hand. Or you internalize, take things personal, and become a product of what you're going through instead of a product of what he went through. Are you with me? Come on. That wasn't a parable or a riddle. That, you got that. With endurance, there's a race that's set before us. So Paul's not just talking in his language about he, he's the one with the race. Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews says there's a race set before us, calling us all into the race. Ain't that something? How are we going to run this race with endurance? Oh, what an answer. Looking unto, yeah. I mean, I'm not being cynical. That's where you're like to go, duh. But here's what I'm not sure. I'm not sure we're looking unto Jesus. I think we're looking unto Jesus for blessing. Looking unto Jesus for protection. Looking unto Jesus for provision and the things that benefit my life. I don't think we're looking unto Jesus to see how he walked through criticism, betrayal, backbiting, and never changed. How he can hang on the cross and nothing done more worse than to any man. You can't even put it into words, the injustice of the cross in the natural. The man that deserved the least in the history of time to die is the one that died. 
The just for the unjust. Nobody took his life. He laid it down. But he appeared to be cursed by God. He appeared to be a blasphemer, a heretic, forsaken and alone. And he never let what men did change who he is. And he's hanging on the cross and he says, Father, forgive them. They know not what they're doing. What's he saying? They're blind. They're deceived. They have no clue who they are. They don't see who they are. They can't possibly see who I am. And they don't, but he has this thing all figured out. He knows if he be lifted up, he's going to draw all men into him. The love of Jesus Christ. It's amazing. You're like, calm down, brother. No, I am being calm. This, this is way bigger than I'm expressing. Way bigger. Done so wrong. He's going to hang there? No. You read your Bible. Secret meetings, Judas, little deals, 30 pieces of silver. Says some believed and wouldn't acknowledge because they didn't want to be cast out of the synagogue. Even some of the leaders believed, but they didn't say nothing because it was too much pressure. And there he is, forsaken. But he ain't forsaken. He's love being expressed. See, you got to see this. You got You can't ever be deceived again and say your life doesn't matter. Your life ain't worthy. Your life's an accident. Are you kidding me? He died once for all. There's a time to be born. Here you sit, and this gospel's in front of you. And, 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 and the best love can say, and the biggest injustice ever committed is forgive them, Father. They know what they do. See, because I know what we'd say. You've got to be kidding me, right? Look what they've done to me. All I've done is good. For three years, I preach truth in their streets. I heal their sick, cleanse their lepers, raise their dead. Barabbas, you've got to be kidding me. He kills a man. I raise the dead. They want to kill me. These people are out of their minds. If they didn't change by now, they ain't never changing. See? I don't think we think like that. I just think we expect Jesus to do what he does because he's painted that way and he's supposed to be that way and he's him and we're us and that was Jesus. No, Christ in us the hope of glory. Follow me. The things I do, you'll do if you believe. Predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. Firstborn among many brethren. That's pretty much scripture to nail that thing down. I got a few more. We got great and precious promises by which through them we partake of his divine nature. Woo! We put off the old man and his deeds and put on the new man who's renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created us. Who are you putting on? Him, his image, Christ in me, the hope of glory. Not Christ for me, not Christ to me. Christ in me, the hope of glory. What's glory? Any realized, made, seen, or known attribute of God. Anywhere God is realized, that's the glory of God revealed. The Christ in me is the hope of God being seen and known. Not with a bad attitude, not feeling sorry for yourself, not if you're not walking in love. Not if you're complaining, grumbling, backbiting, murmuring. Come on. I know this thing's called city quake. I'm just using the word quake. You know what I mean. If you don't let this truth quake your life, how will you ever quake your city? If we're just trying to make it, we're not going to have impact. But if we're impressed with him, Without even trying hard, your life will impress somebody. Because they'll be amazed by your attitude. They'll be amazed by your no-quit mindset. They'll be amazed that you worked beside them and they found out you just went through this and they had no idea. And they'll wonder how it could be. And now you have a voice because you first had a life. Because the greatest sermon you're ever going to preach is your life. Yeah. Whew. Y'all good? 